Now, new creamy prom. The first and only permanent with homogenized waving cream. And deep magic. New facial cleansing lotion that cleans your skin deep, deep down where beauty begins. Present Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks Transcribed. But first... The people who make new creamy prom hope that this has been a very Merry Christmas for you and your family. And you know, right now would be a good time to start planning your new hairdo for 1956. But remember this, the 1956 home permanent is new creamy prom. The first and only permanent with homogenized waving cream. New creamy prom actually waves new softness and manageability right into your hair. Gives you a complete hair beauty treatment as you wave. Only new Creamy Prom has homogenized waving cream. It's completely new, completely different from ordinary drippy waving solutions that often leave your hair dry, frizzy, hard to manage. New Creamy Prom is rich with costly conditioning ingredients. It even pours like thick cream. That's why new Creamy Prom actually waves new softness and manageability right into your hair. Leaves hair in better condition than any other permanent. And talk about easy. Smooth it on. Roll it up. You've got yourself a prom. No dripping. No rinsing. No timing. No messy neutralizer. Smooth it on. Roll it up. You've got yourself a prom. So wave new softness and manageability right into your hair. Get new creamy prom with homogenized waving cream. And even if you're in between permanents, don't wait. Get new creamy prom end curl permanent right now. New Creamy, Creamy Prom. Well, many of us will spend Christmas Eve with our families and friends. But since her family is too far away to visit and her friends have other plans, I'm afraid Armis Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, won't be quite so fortunate. In fact, I can see her now trimming a tiny little tree in the living room of the modest cottage she shares with Mrs. Davis. That's quite a nice tree, Connie. It isn't really, Mrs. Davis, but it's all I could afford. What did you pay for it? I found it in a vacant lot. <laughs> what I like about it is the size. It's not too big or too small. It's just too small. <laughs> I can hardly believe it's Christmas again. Connie, I'd love to stay here and celebrate Christmas Eve with you. But I promised my sister Angela I'd come over to her place. I'd ask you to join me, but Angela hasn't been too well lately. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Mrs. Davis. I'll just spend a quiet evening at home here. But how about Mr. Boynton? Don't tell me he was too shy to ask you for a date on Christmas Eve. Why do you think there's mistletoe on all four walls? <laughs> no, Mr. Boynton asked me all right, but then he canceled yesterday said he's going upstate to visit his folks for a couple of days. But don't worry about me, Mrs. Davis. I'll have a gay time. I'll listen to the radio and read. And from this window, I can see our neighbor's television antenna. <laughs> but what about the little gifts you've got for Walter Denton and Mr. and Mrs. Conklin and Harriet? When are you going to deliver them? Oh, they told me not to bother. They said we'd exchange on the 26th. What's that, Mrs. Davis? Uh, it's Minerva. Where are you, dear? Oh, she's over by the tree. Here, Rover. Uh, Minerva. <laughs> Isn't it the strangest thing how she bites at the pine needles? Well, I've got to run along now, dear. Stop drinking those pine needles, Minerva. Come on over here. That's a good kitty. Now, I'll just settle down in Mrs. Davis's rocker and we'll have ourselves a nice, quiet rock. I've got to exercise more. My bones are rusting. <laughs> oh, it's the rocker. <laughs> it's kind of soothing at that. You seem contented enough, Minerva. <laughs> it was the night before Christmas and all through the house. Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to upset you. Oh, gosh, I'm sleepy. Oh, 
now who can that be? Expecting anyone, Minerva? That's funny, nobody's here. Well, I'm here. Where? Oh, leaning on my knee. <laughs> what can I do for you? Well, I'm a salesman, but I don't believe in giving any sales talk or sob stories. All I do is tell you what I'm selling. And if you want to buy, okay. If not, okay. Okay, what are you selling? Well, it's Christmas Eve, and I'm just a small urchin, a little on the underprivileged side. And I'm trying to make a few dollars to get some wood to heat our tiny apartment. So the while she's singing to my three sick sisters, my mother's lips don't turn blue. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like, no sob stories. <laughs> if you're selling handkerchiefs, I'll take six. Well, no, ma'am, I'm selling Christmas trees. Well, they're only a dollar a piece. But I've already got a tree. Well, then I'll make it 50 cents. I really don't need How it. How about a quarter? Look, little boy. Bonnets can be arranged. Please take them. <laughs> These aren't ordinary trees, you know. They're magic. Magic? Well, yes, ma'am. You'd be surprised what miracles are happen to you if you buy one. Well, a quarter isn't too much to pay for a miracle. Well, it's 50 cents. I thought you said 25. <laughs> well, that's when you sounded tougher to sell. <laughs> oh. Well, before I melt down to my coal buttons and the stovepipe hat, here's 50 cents. Well, you won't be sorry, ma'am. Well, here's the little tree. Hey, it is kind of cute at that. Would you like to come in and help me set it up? Well, I can. I've got to get right home. My sitter's been alone long enough. <laughs> your sitter? What about your mother and the firewood? Oh, that's just a routine. <laughs> My folks are attending a dinner the other bank presidents are giving for father. <laughs> <laughs> well, good night, lady, and Merry Christmas. The same to you, you little underprivileged millionaire. <laughs> well, I'll put this tree over here. Maybe we can find some extra trimmings for it in the morning. Minerva, will you stop gnawing on those pine needles? I wish I knew what made them so appetizing to her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fine. Now you come over here and let those things alone. Now, get on my lap. There we are. Well, I guess I'm not the only one that's spending Christmas Eve alone without family or friends. But who can tell? Maybe Santa Claus has something up his big red sleeve that I don't even know about yet. Of course, I do have a squeaky rocker and Minerva. Jingle bells, jingle bells and merry stuff like that. Oh, what fun it is to rock with a big, fat, drunken cat. <laughs> Something wonderful could happen to Miss Brooks this Christmas. It's happened before. I mean the day she first tried Deep Magic, the wonderful new facial cleansing lotion that cleans your skin up to three times cleaner than soaps or creams and protects your skin against cold winter weather's damage. Deep Magic is completely different. It's a lanolin gentle flowing lotion cleanser that flows deeper into your pores and gently removes deep pore dirt and makeup other cleansers can't reach. Deep Magic cleans deep, deep down where beauty begins and leaves behind an invisible protection like nature's own. That's why Deep Magic keeps your skin soft and smooth, even in the coldest weather. So remember, for gentle, deep cleansing and gentle protection, try Deep Magic Facial Cleansing Lotion. No other cleansing method leaves your skin so clean and clear, so soft and radiant. Deep Magic, the cleansing lotion that cleans your skin. Deep, deep down where beauty begins. Deep Magic. <laughs> As I sat in the living room Christmas Eve with Minerva the cat on my lap, I couldn't help noticing that the tree which I'd bought from that wealthy urchin had a rather peculiar luminosity. Although there wasn't any artificial illumination, it seemed to glow from deep down in its branches. As I rocked back and forth, I started to get very drowsy. Oh, the little boy said this tree was magic, Minerva. 
No, I don't believe it either. Still, it is Christmas Eve. Such a very strange things have happened on Christmas Eve. Ah. Hmm? What, well, what's that? Oh, I must have been dozing. Coming! Well, it's Walter Denton. Come in, Walter. Noel, Noel, joyeux Noel. Gracias. Come on into the living room, Walter. Thanks, Miss Brooks. Here, I brought you this little gift to put under your tree. Oh, that was very thoughtful of you. Put it under this tree over here. Okay. Say you've got uh, two trees, haven't you? Yes, one for Minerva and one for me. What's that? Don't pay any attention to her. She's pine needle happy. (laughs) Look, Walter, while you're here, you might as well pick up the little gift I got for you. Oh, but you shouldn't have, Miss Brooks. Where is it? (laughs) It's under the tree on your right. It isn't much, just a remembrance. Oh, gee, I I almost forgot. I, I can't open it yet. Why not? Oh, you mean you want to put it under your tree at home and open it with your family? No, not exactly, but I'll get it later, Miss Brooks. Oh, there they are now. I'll answer it. There who are now? Yeah, come on in, folks. Come on in. She was all alone when I got here. And it's really a surprise, isn't it? You should have stayed home Christmas Eve. <laughs> Besides, it's freezing out. Oh, now, Osgood, don't be so grouchy. Hello, Miss Brooks, and Merry Christmas. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Conklin, and Harriet, how are you all? <laughs> I'm cold. <laughs> Say, Harriet. Yes, Walter? There's a lot of mistletoe around this room. I know. It's real pretty. Um, Osgood, you notice all the mistletoe in this room? What? <laughs> oh, that green stuff. <laughs> More often than not, it makes me sneeze. Oh, come on, Osgood. Oh, now, Martha, don't embarrass me. I don't... It doesn't make you sneeze, does it, Harriet? I'm willing to find out. (laughs) May I, Mr. and Mrs. Conklin? Well, if it's all right with Harriet, it's all right with us. Oh, come on, Walter, we're getting old. (laughs) Oh, gosh, you're sweet, Harriet. Oh, isn't that cute, Osgood? Now, come here, dear. How about one for your faithful old wife? Well, (laughs) it is customary, I guess. Oh, there, I'm under the stuff. Now, pucker up, dear. Very well. Uh, uh, Yeah, you see, I told... I told you. I, 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 ah! <laughs> oh, now let's stop this romantic drivel and act like adult human beings. Uh, Miss Brooks, I'd like to take advantage of this visit to inquire as to your plans for the coming year's classwork. Now, please, uh, Osgood, this is no time to talk of school affairs. We're here to spend part of our holiday with Miss Brooks. It was very nice of you to think about me, Mrs. Conklin. It was nice of all of you. I really... Where are Walter and Harriet? Denton, get my daughter away from that mistletoe at once. (laughs) Mr. Conklin, Harriet isn't allergic to mistletoe. No, but I'm allergic to you. (laughs) Oh, Harriet's almost irresistible sometimes, especially alongside of older women like Mrs. Conklin and Miss Brooks. (laughs) Sounds like the bell. I'll get it. Why, Mr. Boynton, come in. Oh, thanks, Miss Brooks. I thought you were going upstate to see your folks. Oh, I was, but they sent me a wire that they wanted to come down here for a week or so. Uh, they'll arrive in the morning. So I thought I'd drop this little gift off for you tonight. Oh, but you shouldn't have. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just put it under the tree in the living room. Look who's here, everybody. Well, it's Mr. Boynton. Hi there, Mr. B. Oh, this is nice. Hello, Boynton. <laughs> Pretty cold out, isn't it? <laughs> Hello, folks. This is beginning to get more like Christmas Eve every minute. Sit down, Mr. Boynton. Oh, I'm certainly glad your folks decided to visit you instead of vice versa. Uh, 
Uh, Miss Brooks, have you pointed out the mistletoe to Mr. Boynton? Oh, why don't you stop that nonsense, Ma? <laughs> it isn't nonsense. Uh, Mr. Boynton, uh, look at the mistletoe. Mistletoe? Oh, yes. You know, a very interesting example of the flora found in various areas throughout the globe. <laughs> an evergreen parasitic shrub, it is indigenous to the regions where apple trees and oaks abound. Now that the lecture is over, may we ask questions? Certainly, Miss Brooks. Want to stand under it? Stand <laughs> under it? Well, you see, because of a, certain characteristics in its makeup, an allergy is sometimes aggravated by its presence. I'll take a chance if you will. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Boynton. Yeah, come on, Mr. Boynton. Uh, just bring him over to this wall here. Well, I'll get under it if you like. Well, don't just stand there. Can't you see Miss Brooks is cooking? Well, <laughs> don't fuss for me. I couldn't eat a thing. <laughs> Mr. Boynton, don't you know what standing under the mistletoe signifies? Well, I know what it signifies to most people. Uh, but, but to me, it... 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 it, it well, there goes 85 cents worth of mistletoe. Thomas Brooks will return in a moment. It can't be a Merry Christmas or a Happy New Year either if you mar it with accidents. So leave the dreaming to our Miss Brooks and keep your head nailed on tight during this hectic holiday season. CBS Radio wishes you the merriest of Yules and a happy, healthy 1956. But you've got to make it all come true yourself. Driving, drive carefully. Holiday accidents are the most tragic of all. The most numerous, too, by the way. Walking, walk with care. Cross only at intersections and with the light. Jaywalkers are really inviting trouble during the holiday season because drivers are more apt to be preoccupied with their own problems these days less apt to avoid colliding with them if they're in the way. We don't want to sound a somber note in this holiday season, but maybe this reminder will help our listeners survive 55. Remember, during this season of traditional visiting out, safety first, second and always, at home, out on foot, out driving, in all your holiday season pursuits. Well, my anticipation of a lonely Christmas Eve at home was delightfully dispelled by the arrival of my friends. On Christmas Eve, I was even willing to include Mr. Conklin in this group. Hey, I know what let's do. Let's open up the presents right now. Well, a splendid suggestion, Walter. Uh, shouldn't we wait until just before we leave? Might be less embarrassing that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to open them now, go right Golly, ahead. this one tree is pretty crowded. I'll put some of these packages under this little one over here. Gosh, I got the funniest feeling when I touched that branch. What kind of a feeling, Walter? Well, I... Say, you're Harriet Conklin, aren't you? Well, sure, I'm Harriet Conklin. Walter, what's the matter with you? Nothing. Nothing's the matter with me. It's just that I want to tell you something. Harriet, you've got to change. You ought to try to be more like Miss Brooks. What do you mean, Walter? Well, if you want me to stay interested in you, you've got to be more alluring, youthful, glamorous, feminine, in that real feline Brooks way. <laughs> Walter, have you been drinking pine needles, too? <laughs> Why, look at the tree. It seems to be glowing. Oh, what do you mean, glowing? It's just the reflection from the street lights. This party's giving me the Mimi. <laughs> Holidays, indeed. Here, I'll just move the tree where it won't glisten in our eyes. There we go. Ho, ho, ho! <laughs> Merry Christmas! Why, Mr. Of course I'm Mr. Conklin, <laughs> happy-go-lucky, fun-loving, gag-a-minute Osgood. 
Jag a minute, Osgood. Sometimes I've wanted to. <laughs> Miss Brooks, is that really you standing there? I think so, Mr. Conklin. Why do you ask? Because you suddenly look so different, so intelligent. <laughs> Miss Brooks, I've made up my mind. You are now head of the Madison High English Department. <laughs> well, thank you, fun-loving Osgood. Ah, yes, I'm going to put this wonderful tree where it belongs, right in the center of the room. Give me a hand, Boynton. Yes, sir, Mr. Conklin. I'll just take this end here. <laughs> Miss Brooks. Yes, Mr. Boynton? Come here, baby. <laughs> I said, come here, Connie. You did not. You said, come here, baby, and I'm here. <laughs> hey, look, he's taking her over to the mistletoe. Isn't it wonderful? What are you going to do, Mr. Boynton? Call me Phil, Connie. And this is what I'm going to do. Oh. <laughs> well, Connie, oh. how does that make you feel? Oh, I feel... Feel like I'm in a dream, Philip. A wonderful, beautiful dream. Oh, what's that? Mr. Boynton. Mr. Boynton, where did you go? Where is everybody? Oh, I must have been dreaming. Well, that's real enough. I'll be right there. Oh, I'm sorry, Minerva. I didn't mean to drop you. Surprise! Merry Christmas, Miss Brooks! I'm cold. <laughs> Why, it's the Conklins and Walter and Mr. Boynton. But you all just left. I mean, uh, come in. We thought it would be nice if we spent our Christmas Eve together, Miss Brooks. Yes, and we've brought a few little gifts over for you. I'll just put them under this tree here. Yes, do that, Walter. Well, aren't you going to ask me why I didn't go upstate, Miss Brooks? I know why, Mr. Boynton. Your folks are coming down to see you. How did you know that? I just got the telegram. Uh, don't let's get too carried away with the holidays. We've got to prepare for a hard school season ahead, Miss Brooks. Oh, let's not talk about school affairs now, Osgood. Walter, look at the mistletoe. Yeah. Look at it. Oh, now, just a minute. Before we go through all that again, uh, would you please touch that tree, Mr. Boynton? The one on the left with the... Why, it's gone. There's only one tree. Miss Brooks, are you all right? Of course I'm all right. Could I have dreamt that part, too? Mr. Boynton, would you do me a favor, please? Well, of course, Miss Brooks. What is it? Would you touch the Christmas tree? Touch it? Please, but... it's important. Well... All right. There. Nothing happened. Well, what did you expect would happen? A miracle. Oh, excuse me. I'll be right back. Well, I'm a little urchin, and I'm selling magic Christmas trees. But you were just... Oh, please buy one, lady. They only cost 50 cents a piece. 50 cents? That's right. Here's $2. Give me four of them. <laughs> Thomas Brooks, starring Eve Arden, transcribed, was produced and directed by Larry Burns, written by Al Lewis with the music of Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Conklin was played by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Dick Crenna, Jane Morgan, Bob Rockwell, Gloria McMillan, Paula Winslow, Sammy Ogg, and Bill James. Be sure to be with us next week for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks.